take one yellow and one pink, yeah, I'll and I will encourage you to swim. Not to like read too far ahead because the information does build on itself. So we're going to start with the yellow. So I'll pass them both around. And, and we'll jump right in. So um, we're going to start with some, some definitions about the meaning of home. And this is also, to me, just a different way of thinking about the economy than I ever had before. So. Uh, the, the Greek root of the word eco, um, it means home. So some new ways of thinking about these terms, ecosystem is home and together. So ecosystem oh, is about all the relations in a home, and the home can be the place that you live in with your family, or it can be your workplace, it can be your play space, it can be the entire planet. So those are all concepts of home. Um, ecology is home and knowledge. So it's about knowing and understanding home and the relationships of home. And then economy can be thought of as home and management. So um, it's about how we organize our relationships in whatever that home is. Um, again, it could be your family of origin, the family that you make, or the community that you live in. Um, and it's about trying to hopefully, in an ideal circumstance, uh, create a, a balanced web of stable relationships that are supporting each other. So, I don't really think that's what we have right now, but that's what economy could or should be. So, it's not so much about money, financial markets, uh, but it's about how we're managing our home. So, I just wanted to start really briefly with that um, before we go into the pillars of economy and new ways of thinking about economy. So, you had asked me to because we, we collaborate together, so if Trevor had asked me to jump in, the one thing that I want to underscore is, think about this. In a capitalist system and what we're living in now, we are, as human beings, expected to serve the economy. The way she's describing it, we should think that the economy should be serving us and our home, our individual homes and our community, and it doesn't work that way. So that's the distinction that I want to underscore. Thank you, that's helpful, okay. So, uh, we're going to talk about the pillars of economy and uh, one way to think about the economy and how it functions. Um, so, we're going to start out uh, with resources. So, resources is both labor and natural resources. Um, and when we take those resources, um, oh, sorry, this, I guess labor's here. So, this is more like natural resources combined with labor, human work. Um, we combine those things towards some purpose. Um, so all wealth is generated through the resources and the labor to support the survival, ideally, of everything on the planet. <laughs> so um, then we also have worldview, culture, and I'm on the yellow page now if you want to be looking. Um, and so the there's governance and worldview, which are very closely, closely related. So the function of governance is determined by purpose. So um, we're going to get into the specifics of that. I'm tempted to jump right into what we have right now, but I'm just trying to keep it theoretical for the moment. So governance and everything that it does supports this purpose that we've identified in our system. And the worldview and the culture has to be set up in a way that it supports that as well. So um, it's a lot more concrete when we get into the pink page. So I'm going to ask you to go to the pillars of the extractive economy, make sure you have extractive. Um, and so we're going to go through the more concrete examples of what those things are. So in the extractive economy, um, the, the philosophy around resources is like David was talking about, this endless, this endless source, this assumption that there's life without limits, that there will always be more resources to exploit. Um, and um, we know that's not true, so they call it dig, burn, and dump. Um, and then the, in the extractive economy, the ideas around work is constant exploitation. David also talked about that. Um, you know, I mean, that we can bring in you know, slavery and colonialism and all those things are ways that we've exploited the work of people. There are many examples, I'm sure, in everybody's life of the way that they are exploited <laughs> to support this economy. And so those two things combine to go to the purpose, and the purpose in the extractive economy is the accumulation and enclosure of wealth and power to the 1%. So um, 
So these things combine to support that purpose, and then the governance actually functions to support whatever that purpose is. So because that purpose is the enclosure of wealth and power, the government that we have um, will always serve that purpose, and the defining feature of that government now is militarism um, because it's supporting that purpose. So I think the part that's the most relevant today for art and culture is the worldview. I think that's what we have the most leverage and the most hope of changing. And this exploitative government supporting this shitty purpose can only happen if the worldview and culture allows it to. So I'm hoping that that's why we're all here today, because we want to change that. So to talk just for a minute about the worldview and culture that we have that's um, supporting this right now, like I said, it's life without limits. It's this unending assumption that there will always be more and more and more. Um, whether we're talking about resources or even in our own lives, like that buying more and more and more stuff makes you happy, that, that it's positive to go out and get that extra, that newer phone and that newer you know, pair of shoes or whatever it is. Um, there's like a, there's a veneer of freedom, but it's only certain kinds of freedom. It's the freedom to choose from 20 different kinds of deodorant, <laughs> but it's not the freedom to actually spend your time in a way that feels fulfilling to you. It's based on consumerism. Consumerism is the, held up as the ideal of everything. Um, and it's also, there's a component of the radical individualism with this, you know, that you know every person is solely responsible for themselves, and if you're not succeeding, it's your fault. Uh, and white supremacy and patriarchy are definitely a part of that current worldview too. So I'm gonna move on. For time, this is a lot. Oh, and I will also say. If you say, want to go deeper on the pillars of economy, we'll be exploring it through theater at the two o'clock workshop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and also, if you, we're going to talk about the regenerative <laughs> model here too. But also, I put these out on the front table. I'm not sure if there's more there still or not. I have a few more. But if this model and this concept is like appealing to you and intriguing, and you want to learn more, this booklet goes like way deeper into it. So I super encourage you to take one of those. So we talked about the extractive economy. If you go to the other side of your pink page, we can talk about what a regenerative cooperative economy could look like or should look like. Um, so if we go through in the same order, uh, the way that we deal with resources should have to do with building soil, with uh, regenerative farming practices, with zero waste efforts, um, with supporting biodiversity. So. Obviously, those are pretty no-brainer, but that's a huge shift from what we're doing right now. Um, in this work category for human labor, our labor, and this isn't just about our jobs, but it's about all the ways that we spend our time and our energy. It's about raising our families and the things that we do in the community to support one another and, and our jobs, but not just jobs, need to be shifted to being organized democratically and cooperatively rather than coercively and exploitatively. <laughs> um, and so if we can organize that for a better purpose, the purpose is ecological and social well-being. So if we're able to be successful in shifting that purpose, you know, like we talked about before, the governance will always support the purpose. So what kind of governance would it take to support a purpose of ecological and social well-being? It, one where people are in control of the decisions that affect their daily lives and where decisions are made like at the smallest, most local level possible for that situation. So that's what governance could or should look like. And then the worldview and the culture that would support that would be one where we see ourselves as part of the land and not <coughs> dominating over the land and in a cooperative relationship with the people and other creatures on the land. So that's like a super fast go through of a different way of thinking about economy. And I just, before I go, I imagine that you might wonder how we get from one to the other. I wonder <laughs> that all the time. And again, they do talk more about it in that booklet. So I encourage you to take one. But the four kind of theoretical principles that they offer in the booklet that I think are pretty great. So the first one, um, they call it what the hands do, the heart learns. And so, again, not talking about just jobs, but all the ways that we spend our time and our energy and our labor, um, that we need to be applying, we need to be working now, applying our hands and our labor 
to meet our needs that are rooted in our vision and our shared understanding of what could be. Um, and again, this booklet goes more into it than that. So the next one is, if it is the right thing to do, we have every right to do it. Uh, meaning that you know unjust laws and norms need to be challenged. Um, Rights are not given and rights are not taken away. They are inherent and exercised. They're never taken away. They're only ever violated. So um, we could go, I feel like I could spend a half hour on every one of these. And then, but um, OK, and then if we're not prepared to govern, we're not prepared to win. So we have to develop our capacity and our skills and our community to the point where the alternatives that we can offer to society are better than what they already are getting under the existing system. So we have to be visionary, we have to be developing ourselves, investing in each other, and bringing forward the solutions and being ready to take the reins. Um, this one seems especially appropriate for today's event, but if it is not soulful, it is not strategic. So um, this revolution that we envision needs to nurture our souls and our spirits, um, and there needs to be dance and play and joyfulness while it's happening. <laughs> so that's a lot. And I think I stayed in my 10 minutes pretty darn close. Okay. And so I'm going to invite you all again to organize into small groups and just take a few minutes going over the pages with each other. Um, again, like David said, you may not agree with every single thing that I just presented. That's OK. If you have questions or things that are unclear or things that you disagree with or agree with or you thought were great or were horrible, we're going to give you five minutes to talk about them in the group. And then if there are any really like unresolved specific questions that we can address in five minutes, when we come back from the group, we'll give you a chance to throw a couple of those up. Just try to keep them pretty <coughs> concise because uh, we don't have a ton of time to get into it. So. And maybe I should also mention Cooperation Humble is working on trying to do like a larger, much more in-depth presentation of this whole thing. So hopefully So that what, what I will do is say this, like everything that you just heard from me and Pamela actually came out of an intensive study group that we have done collectively together. There were uh, 12 of us. There are still uh, 10 of us who are actually committed and going forward. Uh, Marissa is here. Uh, she's been doing a lot of that work. So one of the things that I will invite you is that if you have been particularly inspired by this and would like to actually go through a study group session with us at Cooperation Humboldt with a no commitment at the end of it, but just to do a deep dive together over five, six sessions, and we'll, we'll work with you on that. We think that these conversations are critical and that our society is not creating spaces for them, so we are. Thank you. All right, so small group.